Well, hi everyone, hi Rafid. Uh, this is our final video for March 2. We will be talking about optimization theory. We are Javier Gomez, Manuel Contreras and Ignacio Sánchez. And we are going to talk about discriminating monopoly and monopsonist. So, first, what is a, a monopoly in general? So, this is a kind of market situation characterized for the existence of one producer which controls the great majority, almost the total offer of one good. So, uh, this situation has direct consequences on the market and we think that the most remarkable ones are um, that the price is controlled by the producer. It is because uh, there are no competitors who can influence on the price. Uh, the producer uh, can restrict the total offer and uh, he has superior profits compared to other markets. So we also attach a graph which illustrates how uh, the cost and income change in a monopoly as we increase the number of, of units. So now what is a discriminating monopoly? Um, if the same producer has um, a monopolist role in two different markets, there are two markets where the same producer has a monopoly, uh, and he fixes different prices for the same, the same good, we will be talking about discriminating monopoly. Uh, why does he do that to uh, maximize um, profits? He will fix prices taking, uh, taking into account facts as the total income of the market and the um, price elasticity. Also, uh, there's one requirement uh, that is needed to talk about discriminating monop uh, monopsony, monopoly, which is the existence of a physical barrier between the two markets to um, enable uh, someone to buy products in the cheaper market and uh, sell them by his own in the, um, in the most expensive one. Some examples of uh, monopolies are Google and Bimbo, and also Telefónica, not now, but on its origins uh, when the Spanish government gave them the license to be the only telephonic company in Spain. If we consider the profit as the total income, number of units multiplied by the price, minus the total cost, we could have now we will find out which values of Q will maximize profits. First, we should derivate with respect to the two variables the function we want to maximize. Then, we will make the expression equal to zero and see the values of Q asterisk. As we haven't given any values to the constants yet, q to the power asterisk is expressed as an indicate operation in red. To get the price and the total profits when producing q to the power asterisk units, we will substitute their values in the price formula. And now with the profit. Suppose we give these values to the constants a1 equal to 70, b1 equal to 1, a2 equal to 50, b2 equal to alpha equal to 10. So we can now give values to the q asterisk as a result we get the point 30, 10, which, as we can see through the second derivative test on the right, is a global maximum. Finally, we can see the total profit and price it at the point 30, 10, as you can see below. The definition of discriminating monopsonies is a market where there are many players for just one applicant. It is very common in certain goods such as war tanks for the army or public industry companies, etc. In the monopsony, the applicant could make pressure to get 
what they want in terms of price, price and quantity. The characteristic of our monopsony is that there is just one producer, a lot of supplier, just one or not many applicants and normally there is no restriction in that kind of market for the same things producers. How does differ from the discrimination monopolist? A discriminating monopolist, as my uh, colleague Ignacio said, is it will be the opposite of a discriminating monopsonist. It will be a market where there is many applicants and just one supplier. An example could be Renfe because it's the only supplier of travels in train of Spain. This is how we find an expression of the total profit uh, in terms of L1 and L2, main and label. Um, w is weight, uh, P is fixed, and A1 and A2 is constant.